First, I got involved because Ike, Ike Jones uh, led the General Giants program. And, uh, you know, I like working with kids. I have a nine-year-old sister, and, you know, it's, uh, I mean, she's adorable. I love you know, reading to her, playing with her, and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, it would be a fun thing to get involved with. Um, plus, I know that when I was a kid, and, uh, you know, people came from college or, you know, athletes or whatever, that it was a real big deal. And I knew how much I appreciated that when I was a kid and how much I enjoyed seeing them. So I, I you know, I, I figured that, you know, the kids here would kind of have that, they'd have the same effect on them. So we started um, the Breeze Dream Foundation actually on our honeymoon. Um, funny enough, I ended up getting food poisoning on our honeymoon. So um, we had a lot of time to talk uh, in between myself getting sick. So that was just something that we really felt like, okay, what's the next step? Now we have this platform, you know, of, of Drew going into the NFL. What, what can we do? Like how, you know, and, and it's funny because we always talk about leaving this world or, or something better than how you found it. So whether it's like leave this world a better place, leave the city a better city, leave this, you know, wh whatever it is, I, we just want to make something better than how you found it. We love the way that New Orleans accepted us at a time when, you know, we were, we were a little bit lost. I mean, we, we, we didn't know what the future held. Um, you know, my career was in limbo. You know, we were newly married. We had talked about wanting to have a family and yet that was now put on hold just because of the injury and where are we going and where are we ending up and it just you know there was just so many unknowns and, and New Orleans took us in New Orleans embraced us. You know when we came to New Orleans um, it was so interesting because we didn't have kids at the time and there was so much that we wanted to do and there was so much that needed to be done that we really started with this initiative with kind of getting involved with charities or people who were already taking it upon themselves to do something. So there was like Beacon of Hope and there were, there were these people who weren't waiting for yes or no answers. They were getting involved, they were rolling up their sleeves, they were doing what needed to be done. So that was our, our start with our foundation here in New Orleans, was really taking on some of these initiatives that other people had, had started. I guess we thought, what's the future of New Orleans? Well, it's the kids, it's, it's the playgrounds, it's the schools, it's the, you know, it's, it's, if I'm a mom and a dad and I'm moving back to a city, I need to know that my children, my children's well-being um, is the most important thing and that they're going to be raised here um, in a safe, you know, healthy environment. And so we really started working on, you know, the parks and, and playgrounds and schools and, um, and fields and football fields and all that with the, with the children um, and just kind of kept going with that. You know, that was really where we started focusing. I was sitting here on my desk and we had uh, volunteers from uh, St. Charles Presbyterian Church on St. Charles Avenue and from Tulane and from Loyola and Lusher Parents. They were all out here outside doing the um, landscaping work, you know, working in the garden. And what I know now is that Drew was driving around and pulled up in front of school, walked in, and walked, walked in my office, and what he told me was that um, he had been looking to do something to help with the storm, and was there anything um, that I needed? Because he really loved the fact that the community was already doing things, and he wanted to help people that were ready to roll up their sleeves and work and come back. The field we inherited, had big holes in it and it really just was not safe for the kids to be on. And so I said, I brought him, I had the dream board right outside my office and I said, you know, this is what we hope to get done um, to the building. And he looked at it, he pointed to the field and he said, that's mine. Partnership with Athletics and the Arts, 
And um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you all and publicly say thank you and a personal note of both inspiration and thanks for the development of this program, True and Brittany Marie. Everything that, that uh, Drew and Brittany have done with their, their Breeze Dream Foundation is, is incredible. Um, but I think it all started with just their decision to come in the first place. Talked about feeling like coming to New Orleans was a little bit of a calling. I mean, driving through, seeing rundown areas, uh, seeing a team that was rebuilding and had to completely start over from scratch and a city that needed to do the same. They were pretty inspired by this could mean a lot. This is something we'd be really proud of and something we really want to dive in and do. I received a phone call, kind of a surprise phone call, and it was Drew Brees on the phone. He said, Ron, I want to build a playground. And I said, Drew, we want you to build a playground. We had a conversation, and he said what was important, it's not only a playground, but a playground for all kids. I mean, he emphasized all kids. He said he wanted to make sure that kids from all over the neighborhoods, from all over the city, special need kids, everyone can come to this playground and enjoy a very unique playground uh, that he wanted to not only support and pay for it, but he wanted to design. We go to that, that specific playground a lot um, and it was always, it just felt like it just needed to be loved, you know? And so we just couldn't figure out what we could do and how we could do it and you know, the Audubon Association does so much and they have so many different projects going on that you know, we're like, let's let's just do something and let's let's just take care of it. We're we're just gonna go in there and, and really kind of just roll up our sleeves, so to speak, and really kind of make this this playground great. He was involved in the design of the project. We talked to the national companies with playgrounds and special needs and equipment. Um, he actually drew sketches, he laid out design. Um, so it was his playground and um, I would say win a football game and he would tell me to build a playground. You know, in all of New Orleans, there wasn't a playground like this. So um, it was it was fun. I mean, it was fun. It was exciting. We got our kids involved and kind of showed them the different equipment and what they would want to do and how they would want to get involved. And you know, so I felt it was it was our way of making Ottoman a better place. You know, maybe New Orleans at the time. Are you guys ready to have fun? Yeah. Are you guys ready to play? Yeah. Hard to pick a favorite project in New Orleans because I feel like each one has been really special in its own right. You know, whether it be the timing of it or a relationship that was made as a result of it um, or a smile on a kid's face, um, you know, because they, they realized that there was somebody that cared about them and wanted the best for them and wanted to see them succeed. I mean, I can just say how proud I am to have been a part of the resurrection of one of America's greatest cities. And as you drive around now and to reference 10, 12 years ago when that was, you know, a rundown project or that was, you know, just kind of a flooded out area. And now look at it, you know, it's a thriving community or it's a beautiful school or it's a playground and kids are running around laughing, screaming, having a great time. Winning games and eventually the Super Bowl put us back on the map again and without that we would be far behind where we are today. It truly made a difference with sports met, with Tom Benson, the Saints met, but Drew Brees placed on TV saying New Orleans is coming back, this is my city, this is my home. That coverage made all the difference in the world in New Orleans being the city it is today. I can't tell you what it means, especially for the kids in New Orleans after Katrina, and especially for our kids coming back, to know that they're wearing the number nine for an incredibly good human being. It means the world. Well, Drew's legacy far exceeds just being a, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Uh, it starts with the man that he is, and the fact that he recognizes the platform he has. From the guys in the locker room to the city around him, people see that he uses his platform every chance he gets. Uh, he understands the mantra to much is given, much is expected, and lives it on a daily basis. We feel a great connection to New Orleans because of what we've been able to experience here 
and the friendships that we've made and the community that we live in. And um, we just want to, we want to make New Orleans better than when we found it. You know, we want to give back to New Orleans everything that New Orleans has given to us.